What's going on? Welcome to the Film Club. In this video, we're taking a look at Paul Thomas Anderson's cinematic masterpiece, There Will Be Blood. Anderson's ability to tap vividly into various worlds, whether it be the 70s porn industry or the 1910s oil boom, is just absolutely fascinating. And of course, it doesn't hurt to have maybe the world's best actor, Sir Daniel Day-Lewis, on your team. If you love the film as much as me, join us as we take you through 25 facts you maybe didn't know about There Will Be Blood. Sir Daniel Day-Lewis accepted the role of Daniel Plainview because he had been a fan of Paul Thomas Anderson's previous film, Punch Drunk Love. Producer Joanne Seller said that the film might not have been made at all if Day-Lewis had rejected the role. Dylan Fraser, who plays H.W. Plainview, the son of the character that was played by Sir Daniel Day-Lewis, was not an actor. He was an elementary pupil near the film's West Texas shooting location. On the radio program Fresh Air with Terry Gross, Paul Thomas Anderson told Gross that when the production was trying to convince Dylan's mother to allow Dylan to be in the movie, his mother wanted to figure out who Day-Lewis was because he was to play her son's father. So she rented a copy of Gangs of New York in which Day-Lewis played a murderous gang leader nicknamed The Butcher. She panicked at the idea of her son spending time with the man she saw in that movie, so There Would Be Blood casting department rushed to get her a copy of The Age of Innocence in which Day-Lewis plays a civilized gentleman. During filming in Marfa, Texas, No Country for Old Men was the neighboring production. One day, Paul Thomas Anderson and his crew conducted tests of pyrotechnical effects for an oil derrick fire. This resulted in a massive billowing of smoke that disrupted the shot that was being filmed by Joel Cohen and Ethan Cohen next door. As a result, they had to postpone their filming until the next day when the smoke had cleared. Interestingly, both these films, No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood, would eventually become top contenders at the Academy Awards a year and a half down the line. In an interview on the national public radio program Fresh Air with Terry Gross, Paul Dano told Gross that he had originally been cast in the much smaller role of Paul Sunday, which is Eli's brother, and that another actor had been cast as Eli. However, after Dano had already started filming his one scene as Paul Sunday, Paul Thomas Anderson decided to replace the actor playing Eli. Anderson then asked Dano to play both Eli Sunday and Paul Sunday, and they decided to change the film to make the brothers identical twins. Anderson asked Dano to play Eli on a Thursday, and filming for the role began four days later, on the next Monday. By contrast, Sir Daniel Day-Lewis had a whole year to prepare to play Daniel Plainview. Daniel Plainview bears a resemblance to a real early 20th century California oil tycoon named Edward L. Doheny. Both were employed by Geological Survey and worked in Kansas. Both were from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Both ventured into mining before going into the oil business. And both worked with a fellow prospector named H.B. Ailman. Additionally, the bowling alley scene in the end of the film makes another connection between the two. This was filmed at Greystone Manor, a California estate Doheny built as a present for his only son. Sir Daniel Day-Lewis improvised the speech he gives to the citizens of Little Boston about building schools, bringing bread to the town, and so on. Paul Thomas Anderson later commented on the speech, It was delicious. It was plain view on a platter. Apparently, every Wednesday night during editing, Paul Thomas Anderson and his crew would just have steak and straight vodka for dinner to keep in the mentality of Daniel Plainview. The infamous, I drink your milkshake, is in part a real quote. Paul Thomas Anderson claims he found the metaphor in congressive transcripts from the 1920s Teapot Dome scandal in which Secretary of the Interior Albert Fall was convicted of accepting bribes for oil drilling rights to various lands. Anderson said, I think it was Albert Fall who was asked to describe drainage before Congress, and his way of describing it was, if you have a milkshake and I have a milkshake and my straw reaches across the room, and followed up with, I'm sure I embellished it and changed it around and made it more plain view, but Fall used the word milkshake and I thought it was so great. It was mad to see that word among all this official testimony and terminology. A freaking milkshake. I get so happy every time I hear that word. And so do we, Anderson. True cinema. Paul Thomas Anderson told Entertainment Weekly magazine that the fake oil used throughout the movie included the stuff they put in chocolate milkshakes at McDonald's. I have no clue whether this was actually the best option or if Anderson just couldn't keep milkshakes out of his film. 
Sir Daniel Day-Lewis based his voice for and characterization of Daniel Plainview partly on old recordings of the director, actor, and writer John Huston. An article by Christopher Goodwin in the Sunday Times revealed Paul Thomas Anderson sent Day-Lewis documentaries about Houston while Day-Lewis was preparing to play the role. Paul Thomas Anderson planned to have the restored bowling alley located at the Greystone Mansion, which was used at the climax of the film, to be entirely painted in white to give some Kubrick symmetry and menacing quality. Apparently also a nod to a clockwork orange. However, he changed it to its original state when it was later decided that the bowling alley was to be given away for ownership after filming. This is the first film directed by Paul Thomas Anderson not to feature Philip Seymour Hoffman. The great duo shared five films together before Hoffman's tragic passing in 2014. The latest Anderson film featuring Hoffman was The Master in 2012. In my opinion, a very underrated director-actor collaboration. There Will Be Blood is set in California, so naturally, Paul Thomas Anderson wanted to film on location there for authenticity. However, when he and the location scouts surveyed the area, they couldn't find anywhere there that looked like California in the early 1900s as it had changed so much. So, they ended up filming most of the film in Marfa, Texas. Russell Harvard, who plays the deaf adult H.W. Plainview at the end of the film, is actually deaf. Sir Daniel Day-Lewis appears in every scene of the film with two minor exceptions. He's not present in the scene where Eli Sunday berates his father, or in the brief montage of H.W. and Mary Sunday leading up to their marriage. Daniel's warning to H.W. that he's making a grave mistake by moving to Mexico to begin his own oil company would prove to be prescient. Only 10 years later, Mexican oil production would be nationalized, driving out all foreign companies. Although the script is based upon the Upton Sinclair novel Oil, Paul Thomas Anderson used only the first 150 pages for a big portion of the material. The rest was contrived. The novel's setting was in the 1920s, but the timeline of the film was moved to the beginning of the oil boom in California. The score for the film is made by Radiohead guitarist Johnny Greenwood, who has composed several film scores following the boom of Radiohead. This includes two other Anderson films, namely The Master and Phantom Thread. Though Johnny Greenwood's score for this film was very well received, it wasn't eligible for the Best Original Score Academy Award because it incorporates parts of his previous compositions, Popcorn Superhead Receiver and Body Song, as well as some other material composed by Arvo Part and Johannes Brahms. Along with his win in 1989 for the film My Left Foot, Sir Daniel Day-Lewis became only the eighth actor to win the Academy Award for Best Actor twice. However, Day-Lewis later won an Oscar for his role in Lincoln in 2012. That made him the only male actor to have won three Best Actor awards at the Academy Awards. Before the idea of the movie had come up, Anderson was working on a screenplay about two warring families, but it wasn't working right. At the time, he was staying in London and was feeling homesick. He saw the cover for a copy of Upton Sinclair's Oil that featured a California oil field. Because of this, Anderson bought the book, and it inspired him to write his film. Frazier got good reviews for his work as H.W., but it was not the start of a new acting career. To this day, Frazier has never acted in another film, and given that he's now a man in his 20s, that probably isn't going to change. Much like There Will Be Blood, John Huston's classic film Treasure of the Sierra Madre is about greedy men in the wide open West, though they are after gold instead of oil. Anderson found Treasure of the Sierra Madre quite an influence when working on his film. In fact, he said that he watched the movie every night while writing the screenplay. While Anderson was editing the film, the acclaimed filmmaker Robert Altman died. If you have watched Boogie Nights or Magnolia, you know how much of an influence Altman had on Anderson. There Will Be Blood is dedicated to the memory of the late director. The first line in the film is Daniel saying, No. Then, there she is, after 4 minutes 55 seconds. The next line of dialogue doesn't come until almost 15 minutes in. Paul Thomas Anderson would say later, in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, I always had a dream about making a movie that had no dialogue in it, just music and pictures. The closest I got was the beginning of There Will Be Blood. Daniel Day-Lewis has also since said that the original script for the film had no dialogue for the first 30 minutes. 
There you have it. Twenty five facts you now know about the film. There will be blood. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to leave a comment if there are other facts we missed in this video. As usual, I round up with a random film recommendation. I recently came across Ryan Coogler's debut film Fruitville Station, an emotionally powerful film. Make sure to check it out. That's it for now. I'll talk to you in the next one.